Lord, thank you for this opportunity to share this word of God with the children of God. You've given us the responsibility as the overseer and the shepherd of this house to feed the flock of God. So, Lord, I ask you to, first of all, I ask you to sit upon the hearer and sit upon the, uh, the one who is sharing and breaking the bread of life. Lord, I ask you for preaching grace and power even now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I ask you to settle my body for the assignment ahead. Lord, I give you praise for it now. In Jesus' great name. And Lord, as we are attentive to this word, let us be arrested by what you want to say prophetically to us as a people. For man does not live by bread, donuts, and croissants alone, but man lives by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, Lord, we thank you for the mouth of God being released to us in this morning. Hey, and we thank you for what you're about to release. Let heaven's will collide with ours. Hallelujah. Let them wrestle till you win. We give you praise for it now in Jesus' great name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Touch three people around you and say, neighbor, hold my coat. Hold my coat. Say it with an attitude too. Hold my coat. Hold my coat. <clears throat> we have declared and we have decreed and we have pushed and prayed into the idea and the concept that we are in our year of difference. We are in our year of difference. Somebody shout that with me. I'm in my year in the difference. It's not the year of the difference. It's the year in the difference. And so I want to give you a few uh, words for your vocabulary that I think is going to help us throughout the rest of this month. And uh, this is going to be something that's going to push us into the future context of all things Jesus Christ uh, for this year. Amen. Uh, the, for the word push here means to press or urge forward to completion. Is to press or urge forward to completion. It also means to cause to increase. This is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary's definition that it means to cause to increase. Shout that with me, to cause to increase. Say, this year, God's going to cause me to increase. Now, also it means to move or endeavor to move away or ahead by steady pressure without striking. Steady pressure without striking. Now, we're pushing into our difference, and this word difference I want to clearly define for you as well. Difference is a characteristic that distinguishes one from another or from the average. <laughs> it's the characteristic that distinguishes one from another or from the average. I'm above average in this season. Glory to God. I'm above average in this season. And it's not, it's a revelation thing that I caught in the spirit that I'm above average this season. That God's not called us to be an average people, but above average people. There has to be something distinct and unique about his that separates his from the world. We don't look like goats. We are the, the sheep of God. And I believe that we are made to be distincted people. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout, I got speckled spots on me. That's a New Year's Eve reference. It also means an instance of being unlike or distinct in nature, form, or quality. So in Mark chapter 10, I want to just jump on this because I got about 20 minutes, but I want to jump on this idea and this concept about moving or pushing into your difference because I believe that this month is the, is the, uh, the catalyst to get you to start wrestling in your head and contending and disciplining yourself for the moment and the season of being made distinct. Somebody say amen. In Mark chapter 10, we see uh, in this particular discussion, there's so much happening about marriage, so much happening about children. But this particular discussion is right on the heels of Jesus coming out of a lengthy discussion on honor. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, are talking. Now, one translation or one, one uh, particular writer says that they was with their mother, that their mother brought them to Christ. Same situation, just different persons telling the story. Mark records it as James and John coming to Jesus and say, I have a question for you that only you can ask. And here's the favor. Can we sit on your right and on your left when you come into your throne? And it's an ambitious request because they're asking to be seated next to him. And he asked them, he said, now listen, you can sit there if you can endure the cup that I'm willing to endure. Are you able to drink the bitter of what I'm able to drink? And when this happens, the other ten get angry. 
And Jesus establishes a kingdom precept concerning honor and promotion. This is what he says in Mark chapter 10, verse 41. Read this in the Message Bible. He says, you've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around. He said, and when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their heads. Uh Uh-oh. It's not going to be that way with you. Tell your neighbor, it's not supposed to be that way with you. And when you get promoted, you're not supposed to get arrogant in this season. You got to keep your head exactly where it was that got you promoted. It's not the time to be to be sedity. It's not the time to be pious. It's not the time to act like you did it all by yourself. This is a season of honor, and honor comes to men and women who know how to humble themselves. That if God has to abase you, you're not ready for the next level. But if you know how to humble yourself, which means to have your strength under control, God's ready to promote you to the next level. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're coming in to your next level your next place of honor all you got to do is stay humble as God promotes you you ain't got to fight nobody behind it just stay humble you don't have to dedicate your victories to your last you need to be humble Uh oh but God is about to bring you into I feel my help the scripture says this whoever wants to be great he says must become a servant which he gives us a principle that in order to be something in God you have to be a person who understands how to be a servant to other people God deliver me from people that do not know how to serve or have the desire to serve other people y'all quiet up in this Anglican church already but I'm telling you servanthood is a key to promotion you find me a man that knows how to serve and I'll show you somebody God's about to make a king in the house because God look and that's just not servanthood so everybody can see it but true servanthood but you don't got to take a picture of it you ain't got to call nobody that you did it you just did it in secret and because of how you did it in secret God's about to reward matter of fact I'm going to prophesy if you've been doing things in this last season and nobody knew you was doing it you just stepped into your year of the difference coming Look what it says. It says, uh, bring me some more bottom. It says, whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Here it is. This is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for many who are held hostage. Somebody said, hold my coat. In Mark chapter 10, now that we didn't got that out the way very quick, like I got 17 minutes left and counting. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 says it like this. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho, which means that Jesus has passed through the city of Jericho with his disciples. Look what it says. And a great number, read this with me, of people. A great number of people. Who else? Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, set by the highway side. There's four problems in the text, LeJean, that I want to give you very quickly. You might want to take notes on this. There's four problems in the text. Here it is. There's four problems in this text that you've got to see, but you can't get past. <laughs> There's four things in the text immediately in verse 46 that sticks out. And they came to Jericho, went out of Jericho with the disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway uh, side begging. The story, make no mistake about it, is all about Bartimaeus. It's all about Bartimaeus. Here's four problems, Denise, about Bartimaeus. Number one, he's blind. Write that down. He's blind. He's blind. He cannot see. He's blind. He's blind. That's the first thing. He's blind. Number two, he's poor. Mm-hmm. He's poor. He's poor. Somebody shot that with me. He's poor. Number three, he's Timaeus' his son. That's a problem in the text. And number four, there's a crowd. <laughs> Y'all quiet in this morning. Number one, shot that with me. Number one, he's what? He's blind. Number two, number three, and number four, Let's deal with the first one. The first one, as you're pushing into your difference, please understand that, to, that, that, that Bartimaeus in the story, the scripture wants to show us and calls us to pull out the fact that he is blind, which means there is, Pastor Dan, a physical limitation about Bartimaeus. Scripture never states when he became blind. It didn't even tell us that he was born blind. He could have went blind. Because when I, the Bible does not want us to be hung up about when he became. It wants us to, be con- to consider the fact that he is now. No matter how he got there, he's at this place now. So it just tells us that he's blind, which means the conditions now of blindness have gone beyond his physical ability. It also affects his psyche and his daily life. 
which means he has a natural limitation that has changed the way he has to do life. He came, you see, so what he said is that this natural limitation now has caused him to have some challenges about moving forward. Let me help you out real quick. Because there are people in this room that your natural limitation is your inability to believe that your mental capacity can get you to the next place. You don't have to feel like you have the brilliance or the skill set necessary for your next place or the natural ability. Because if you're in this room and you seem like every time you get started, you come up short, it's possibly because you're walking in a season of blindness. It doesn't matter how you got there. It just matters now that you're there. And I think in order for us to get to that next place, we got to first admit to ourselves, I got some type of limitation on me that's keeping me from moving into the things of God. The lack of education, hmm. challenging speech, it's difficult with your addiction or any physical limitation. Number one, he's blind, which means now his psyche has to stand up for him. He has to be socially intelligent, but watch this, and dependent upon other people. One of the worst places to be as a believer, watch this, in today's culture, is have to depend on somebody else. Because now you got to depend on people having your best interests in mind. And sometimes, uh-oh, some of the circles that we find ourselves in, in the season of victory, slow down, son, in the season of victory, you'll find out that the people you thought was going to celebrate you are frustrated with your upward mobility. You want to see who's on your team? Triumph will show you who's on your team. Triumph will show you. Victories will show you exactly who's in your corner and who's not. See, some of y'all in 2019 had some job promotions. You had some new opportunities, a brand new relationship, perhaps got engaged, and then you found out that people that used to call you are not calling you no more. Why? Because when you start to get sight, uh-uh. I got to move. I got 12 minutes. Here we go. Next service. Number two, he's poor. Somebody shout he's poor. Which means he lacks resources. Not only does he have a physical limitation, right? Shit, or a mental limitation or psychological limitation. He also is poor, which means he lacks resources. He does not have the resources to change his situation. He doesn't have the connections to change his situation. Y'all quiet. He doesn't have the right network of people around him to change his situation. He doesn't have information. Why? Because poverty is really ignorance. Huh. See, the truth about poverty is poverty means you don't know a thing. People don't just become impoverished, they become ignorant. And because of the ignorance, you become impoverished. That's why you can give a million dollars to a bum and he'll lose it if he doesn't have systems in place to help him multiply his wealth. Y'all quiet up in here. Because ignorance breeds poverty. Shout to me, ignorance breeds poverty. Which tells me that Bartimaeus was not just poor, but Bartimaeus was also ignorant. It's possible to have a skill set and not the backing. It's possible to have the ability, but no one to believe in your dream. He's poor of relationship. Who hangs out with poor people? Who hangs out with a, with a person who's lacking in everything? Who, who, finds it, who finds it encouraging to get wisdom and counsel from somebody who has nothing? Number three, he's Tamaeus' son. It's going to walk down your aisle here. He's Tamaeus' son. Shout that with me. He's Tamaeus' son. That's a problem. Why? Because he's living beneath his expectation over his life. And you may be saying, Apostle, how did you get that? Well, he's Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus means he's the son of Bar, meaning son, a boy. Bar, like bat mitzvah, is the girl's bar mitzvah. The girl's expression of the bat mitzvah is to celebrate her at a certain age. The bar mitzvah celebrates the son. He is Bar Timaeus. He is the son of Timaeus. Son of Timaeus meaning Timaeus, literally meaning one who is highly prized or honored. Which means when he's born, there's an expectation on his life to be more than what he is. <laughs> Bartimaeus is now living beneath the expectation of a previous generation concerning him. And I came to talk to about 25 people in this room that perhaps are living beneath the expectation of God upon your life. Y'all quiet up here because you got to be honest about yourself and tell the truth that I'm really presently living beneath the expectation of God for my life. I've seen myself much further than I am right now. I did not anticipate that I would get to 40 years old and 
and still be in the same place I was in when I was 30 years old. Who am I talking to? Because you got to get sick and tired of that place in order for God to push you into the next place. The same old cycle, the same old tricks, the same old snares, the same old relationships, the same old mindset, the same old blocks, the same old stumbling blocks, the same old traps. But when you get to that place in your mind, where you can recognize this is not heaven's best. Something on the inside of you gets frustrated. Who am I talking to? I believe there's about 30 people in the room that are frustrated with your previous season. But I got news for you. God was waiting on you to come to the end of yourself so he can bring you into your next place. Will you high five three people around you and tell them I'm coming into my next place? They may ask you why. Tell them because I'm sick of the place I'm in right now. Y'all quiet up in this Anglican church this morning. I am sick of trying to pay this bill and can't pay that bill. I'm sick of being in this situation and not that situation. I'm sick of having a mindset that I'm supposed to finish school, but I won't start. I'm sick of this place. Sick of it. Somebody shout, I'm sick of it, sick of it. Because the expectation of Ambadeva High, the expectation of God is much greater than what you're seeing in your life right now. There are times and there are moments and there are seasons where God will show you a thing about yourself and you begin frustrated. Why? Because you see what heaven said about you, but you don't see the manifestation of the reality. But in this year, let me prophesy, in this year of 2020, I believe that God's about to push you into your difference. He's about to push you into into your difference. Number four, here's the last one. You ready for this? There's a crowd. Somebody shout, there's a crowd. Number one, number one, number one, number one, he's blind. There's a, limit, there's a limitation on him. Number two, he's poor. Number three, number three is what? He's the son of Timaeus, but number four, four I feel my Baptist roots here. Number four, there's a crowd. <laughs> there's a crowd around. There's a crowd. There's a crowd here. He, he's, that means that he's one among many. Oh, Lord Jesus. He's one, Prophet Kwame, I'll preach to you. He's one among many. That's a problem here because breakthrough is coming through the city. I'm lacking resources. I lack the ability to get to him without somebody else's assistance. And uh, there's an expectation. And the one that can fix it is close by. But what makes me different than the other multitudes that are following him in the first place, plus the 12 and the 70 that are connected to him. Uh, this is when you got to be strategic here. So now the strategy of this blind, non-resourceful man has come upon this man because he's one among many. Somebody shout that with me. He's one among many. Look what the verse says in verse 47. And when he heard, read it with me. And when he heard that it was what? Jesus of Nazareth. Come on. What does it say? He began to cry out and say, shout it with me. Jesus. Shout it again. Jesus. What? Thou son. Uh-huh. Why, 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 why is that? Why is that so key? Why is that so key? Because the son of David reference literally means that, that, he, that he is the fulfillment of prophetic prophecy, which means it was spoken of through times past, but there was one who was coming to restore all things back to the children of Israel. And so they call him the son of David, only those who came into the knowledge of the revelation that he is the walking manifestation of a prophetic word. So he pulled on a prophetic decree. He pulled on a prophetic decree from past tense and moved at the speed of a prophetic word. Y'all quiet up in here. Moved at the speed of a prophetic decree, which means something on the inside of him connected his situation to the one that was prophesied that could, you got to learn how to pull on a prophetic decree. You got to learn in this hour that when God says you're moving into a season of the difference, you can't stand there in your lack of resources, lack of limitation. You got to connect your faith to a prophetic decree. Look what it says. Why, why is that important? Because I'm going to tell you why. Prepare things are for desperate people. <laughs> he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Why? Because prepare things are for desperate people. But desperation begins where settling ends. See, y'all ready for this word? But the difference is for the desperate. The desperate. 
difference is only for the desperate. Look what it says in verse 48. And many charged him that he should what? Come on, shout it louder. That he should what? But what did he, what did he do? With, with, he cried the more what? I got five minutes, a great deal. What did he cry out? Shout it with me. That's, shout it. Can I tell you something? There is a danger in your difference. There's a danger in each one that comes with the people who are awakened to the difference. You want to know what that is? It's the human, the human effect. <laughs> See, as soon as he started to prepare his heart for the difference, look what happens. The people, the same people that were depending upon Jesus to fix them. got frustrated with him trying to get Christ to fix him. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm going to help you out. See, the thing is, they've been hanging around, but they didn't have the guts to say nothing. I wish I wish. They, didn't have, they didn't have the courage to open their mouths to even initiate the opportunity and the door to even move into a encounter with him themselves. So once he did it, they started hating on him. <laughs> you know why? It, it's, it's, it's two reasons. Number one is this. They were okay with him begging for money. As long as he wasn't begging for change. <laughs> Y'all got it. You missed the play on words. They were okay with him begging for money. But they were not okay with him begging for change. See, as long as you stay, see, some individuals are comfortable with you and your sameness. I came to preach that to every complacent devil in this room this morning. If you've been complacent in your stuff, you're coming out of that place in Jesus. As long as you're in your sameness, Principal Williams, as long as you are in your sameness, they're okay. But the minute, <laughs> you start coming into your difference. That's when folks want to tell you it don't take all of that. Y'all quiet. You, you over there at that church where they, they doing all that casting. You ain't got to cast, casting out devil. Yeah, y'all, the devil ain't got that much power. The devil, you know, y'all talking about the speaking in tongues and, and all that kind of. No, no. See, the minute that you're in the sameness, three points in the close, and I know he's all right. As long as you're in the sameness, I don't care. As long as you are in the sameness, what a fellowship, what a joy. Divine. As long as you are, may the Lord be with thee, watch between me and thee until we meet. You don't even know why you're saying it. But as long as you're in the sameness, we are okay. But the minute, the minute you the minute you walk into something different, there ain't nothing but a code over there. <laughs> uh, that's, the, that's false doctrine <laughs> the minute you, you come out of your sameness and start moving into your difference it's okay as long as you beg and there are some individuals that are in your story because you've been begging you gotta beg them to stay oh quiet Jesus you gotta beg them to stay. You gotta beg them not to leave you. And then when you get ready to make a decision, they manipulate you into staying. They just find, they find ways to make you feel bad about trying to make a make up, trying to do better for yourself. Who am I talking to? The minute, the minute you make a decision, but I, I can't I can't pay your bills no more and mine. Then all of a sudden they don't want to call you no more, and because everything shifts because you made a decision. Here's number two the reason. I got one minute. Here's, a, here's number one. They were okay. I'm almost there. They were okay with him begging for money, but not for change. But number two, they were mad because he would take the attention off of them. Do you know there are some individuals that are okay with, with, with you being here with God? But the minute, oh, who is for? You start to supersede what they have done with God. <laughs> then all of a sudden, they begin to ship. Because if I brought you into it, how can you now be sharing with me? Jesus Christ. 
See, once you start expecting different, someone try and hold you to their last revelation of you. Ooh. This is how fast my runs. I'm coming into my difference. And I can't let people hold me hostage to the last place they saw me. Y'all quiet up in here. I believe that word was about to free at least 50 of y'all that got people that still want to invite you to the club, still want to still want to slide into your DMs, still in your inboxes, still think you the same ho- oh, oh, still think you the same person that you was in the last season. I don't care. They think you the same person you wasn't, but you're not. You're not the same person. Something changed over the last six days of this year. A newness has been coming upon you. Because you're coming into, coming to your difference. I got 37 seconds overtime. Look what it says here. I'm around y'all. You, you might as well stand. I'm almost done. 40, verse 49. Come on, Jarrell. It's ready to go. 49, it says this. And Jesus stood still. And he commanded him to be called. I love this part. Because I don't believe. Y'all ready for this? I don't believe that Bartimaeus got all his attention by himself. See, when you read the text, Monte, we assume that Bartimaeus is the one that got his attention alone. But as I was reading, the Spirit of God began to minister to me. He said, son, do you really think with the multitude around him that it was only him? I said, well, 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 if they're telling him to shut up and he's crying out and there's a multitude thronging against Christ and the 12, then how in the world did he get the attention? So the Lord told me, you ready for this? He said, he said, he said, son, he said, please understand. I heard all the voices. It wasn't just Bartimaeus' voice to get his attention, but he also heard the voices of those trying to tell him to stop. Let me prophesy to you. Every doubter, every whisperer, every slanderer, and every non-believer is about to get you noticed in this next season. <laughs> So you thought, you thought, see, people, people have the mindset that they think that they can bury you. But I can't bury you because God will use their whispering to push you into your difference. Look what he says here. Thank you. Right there. Stay there. He says in the next verse, he says, and they came, they called the blind man. Look at this. They called the blind man saying to him. Be of good courage. Rise. He called thee. The same people who just challenged him are now cheering him. This is so prophetic. You're about to come into a season. You're into it. And let me tell you why I know this. Because if it happens to your man of God, it's happening in the house. Do you, do you see how that works? Because the men of God, women of God serve as prophetic gestures to you. Read Ezekiel. Read Isaiah. What happens to these men impacts the people. You're in a season now where if they challenge you before, don't be too skeptical when they come back around. It's not their fault. They didn't have the emotional intelligence to handle you in that last season. So God had to grow you so you can handle them in their process. They came to him and said, yo, he's calling you. Because favor will make allies out of enemies. But look what it says here. Read it with me. Verse 50. Read it loud. Read it with your best Holy Ghost filled voice. Ready? Read. And he. Stop right there. Listen to me say, hold my coat. This, this is the brains on your line. The brains of this right here is, is, is here. It says, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking he's poor. Doesn't have resources, no friends really. He's poor. In those days, poor people were treated probably worse than they're treated now. It was terrible. He's poor and he's blind, which means he's a dependent poor person. The Lord showed me that he threw away his garment. That struck me as odd. You're you're poor. Why throw? What what are you throwing off your cloak for? Preachers, anytime something's in the text, you got to investigate. Why did the scripture, why is Mark so careful to tell us, prophet, that he threw off his garment? That doesn't even make sense to the text, Denisha. But it does. 
Can I show you? <laughs> the cloak in the old covenant, especially for poor, for poor people, were for, for, for those who were trying to get a job, at least trying to work to feed themselves, that a day laborer regularly pledged their garment as collateral against the full day's work. Which means like, I'll work, I'm so poor, but I will take the little I got to pledge that I will work for you. But I said, okay, that's powerful, but it's gotta be more. Watch this. In many cases, it was their only extra covering besides their loincloth. Thus the law, somebody shout the law, requires it to be returned at the end of the day so that they are not left without protection against the night's chill. But then the Lord showed me Exodus 22. You ready? Exodus 22 is the laws, is a law. The law says, if you lend money, this is what God said, not God said this. Exodus 22 verse 25, I put it on the screen. If you lend money to any of my people who are in need, do not charge interest as a money lender would. Look at verse 26, read it with me. If you take your neighbor's cloak or your garment as security for a loan, you must return it. Look at verse 27. This coat may be the only blanket. Now read the next one. How can a person sleep? Here it is. If you do not return it and your neighbor cries out to me for help. This is God speaking. So the cloak, garment, is what qualified Bartimaeus to work. Without it, he would be a slave. But watch this. He was abandoning his coat. His abandoning of his coat was faith. And according to the law, concerning, to a, concerning a poor man, if he didn't have his coat and cried out, God himself would hear him. He connected to a word. Y'all missed this? Bartimaeus had enough to say, uh-uh. Let me throw this here. When he threw that down and cried out to the son of David, it's the same as crying out to God. Based upon that law. Listen, y'all. The law had not yet been abolished. Are you here? The, the law, Jesus had not yet died. He was the fulfillment of law. He said, I did not come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law. And so what he did, he fulfilled a law or a promise to, but he was not so depleted that he could not connect to a previous word. In this season, as you're moving into your difference, please understand, the coat represents the only thing tying you to your cycle. What's covering you, beloved? Bartimaeus, blind, lack of resources, physical impairment, whatever your blindness is, your lack of resources is. In order for him to push it to his difference, I can see him saying, listen, hold my coat. I'm coming after this thing. In 2020, you got to be, watch this, no disrespect, but the Bible calls Caleb a name. When they say Caleb, they're calling him dog. Literally, his name means dog. Look it up. Caleb's name means dog. And when they got ready to pursue Canaan and they came back with an evil report, <laughs> the dog was like, now nah, we can do this. You got to be in this season as relentless as a dog. Are y'all hearing me? It's, if you're going to push into your difference, whatever it is that God is pulling on you to do, you got to be non-negotiable about it this season. I'm sick and tired of coming into New Year's with new promises and they don't manifest that by the time we get to February you already ran out of steam that devil is a liar this season are you hearing me? I'm going to tell you something very personal I said I, I got to do something I got to do something I got I to gotta take my, my scholarship to another level I don't have a lot of time I don't I don't have time to be on the phone hardly no more I don't have a lot, a lot of time a lot of time I don't but I had to tell myself it starts with you. You got to be a dog about it. So what I decided to do was enroll again. Y'all quiet, you don't get it. Family, kids, church, 
international responsibilities, building project, business ideas, another book, and I still took the time to enroll, to get myself back in school. If, do I have the money to pay for that? No. <laughs> Lack of resources? Yeah. <laughs> Limitation? Yeah, my time is gone. Y'all quiet up in here? But I know that there's a greater expectation over me. And I'm sick. Even you, you, you seem like you're doing. There's more. Y'all quiet up in here. There's more. Okay, you make a, somebody say, I make $80,000 a year. Well, you're supposed to be making $180,000 a year. There's more. So touch my name and say, there's more. There's more. I re I'm a prophesy to somebody. I refuse to leave this year with the same bank account that I had when I began this year. Touch somebody right and say, there's more, there's more. But you got to put your coat down in order for you to get to it. Son of David! Stand to your feet. If this word was for you, clap your hands all over the room. High five three people around you and tell them, say, I'm pushing into my difference this year. It won't be the same way it was before. Tell them everything about to change. Y'all quiet up in this 930 service. Everything's changing. Not about to. Everything is changing. Somebody shout to me. Everything is changing. You are a prophetic people. I dare you to open up your mouth and declare everything changed. There it is. Everything I'm pushing into my difference. God is allergic to sameness. I think he regurgitates sameness. How can a God make all animals and make them all different and be attracted to sameness? He's not looking for you to copy a blueprint of somebody else. He's trying to make you a blueprint, big head. He's trying to push in you. Hey, 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 hey. The ability to be the first one to do what you call. Hey, hey, I feel that thing. There's a first one anointing about to hit this room. I said there's a first one grace about. There's a oh there it is. There's a forerunner's grace about to hit this room. You're about to be the first one in your family to do what other generations never could get done. I said never could get done. Let me tell you why. You can't be connected to this oil. And operate in sameness. Woo! I feel like talking that talk today. You can't be connected. You can't be connected from this to this soil and still operate in same. There is a distinction coming to you, a uniqueness for you are fearfully uh, and wonderfully made. You gotta push into your difference. Somebody just prophetically do that. Just push, push into your difference. Just nudge and they push your neighbor real good. And say, just push into tell them push into your difference. Push into your, come here Isaiah, stretch out your tents, stretch out your tent, Stre put your pegs down, come on, stretch out your, strengthen your cords. You got more, I feel this thing, I feel like flowing there. There's a prophetic grace to push you into your uniqueness and into your difference. Hey, we shall be a people that shall be allergic to sameness. We will never do it the way they always saw it, but we'll be attracted to the difference, drawn to the difference, demonstrating in the difference, displaying the difference. No eye has seen what heaven has prepared for you, beloved. Just do me a favor. Just push somebody next to you. Say, I'm pushing. I need you to catch this. I'm pushing into it. No more excuses. Throw your cloak on the ground. And somebody cry out to the son of David. Connect yourself to a previous word. And say, everything spoken over my generation is coming to pass through me. Y'all quiet. Jet hit. Bartimaeus went back two, three, four, five hundred years. Every prophetic decree that's been spoken over my bloodline is coming to pass through me. It's coming to pass through me. I need you to shout about that real good. It's coming to pass through you. What my grandfather did not achieve, I shall achieve. What my grandmother did not do, I shall do. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it.
do it. I am prophesying to you. I'm declaring you shall do it. You shall be your generation's joy. You are the legacy. You are it. All right, hold hands the person next to you.